Let us now discuss the second part of mathematics in efficiency. We will discuss transportation problems. The question is, what is the efficient way of distributing goods or tasks? Transportation problems are concerned with determining the optimal strategy for distributing a commodity from a group of supply centers called your sources to various receiving centers called destinations in such a way to minimize total distribution cost. Okay, so again, if you are in the part of the uh, supplier, you're the source, okay? And then you will transport your goods to your centers called destinations. And of course, you want to do that in such a way that you have the minimum possible distribution cost. Here is an example. A company has two plants, P1 and P2, producing a certain product that is to be shipped to three distribution centers, C1, C2, and C3. Plants P1 and P2 can supply 110 units and 130,000 units respectively. On the other hand, the distribution centers C1, C2, and C3 meets 80,000, 70,000, and 90,000 units respectively. The cost of shipping from the suppliers P1 and P2 to the customers are given in this table, meaning to say if P1 will supply to C1, it will cost them 30, okay? The question is, how many units should be shipped from each plant to distribution center so as to minimize the cost? Okay, so this is like um, the diagram, okay, of our... Problem. So the arrows here indicate that from P1 to C1, it will cost 30 pesos. Here, it will cost 40, 000, uh, 40 pesos. Okay. Here, I just, from the table, from the previous table, I have now a supply column and a demand column. Now, as you can see here, what is the total of my demand this is 15 plus two, this is 240,000 when you add your supply that is also 240,000 so in that case we say that this is balance meaning to say the total demand is the same as your total supply so we want to know how will we distribute our supply so that all the plants will be given their demand but of course we want to have the minimum possible cost here is an algorithm for solving transportation problems first we will look for an initial feasible solution using the northwest corner rule now that is just an initial solution that is not yet the optimal solution once we have your initial feasible solution we will now get an optimal solution using your stepping stone method here's how it works for the northwest corner rule okay so for the first step you have to assign the maximum number of units possible to the northwest corner what that means is that this is the northwest corner right you have c1 needs 80,000. so this is the maximum number of units possible so you will supply that to c1 via p1 i will put here 80,000. next Reduce the supply associated with row 1 and the demand associated with column 1 by the assigned amount. Meaning to say, this, this one here will become 0, right? Because C1 is already supplied. 
this becomes 0. And this one becomes 30,000 because you already allocated 80,000 to C1. Okay? Next step. Wait, I will just put again here what we just discussed. This is already 80,000. This is 0. Yeah, that's all. That's 30,000. Okay. If the supply in row 1 is completely satisfied, eliminate row 1. Not yet, right? We still have 30,000 units left. If the demand in column 1 is completely satisfied, eliminate column 1. So, we have already done that because this is now 0, okay? Step 3, wait, again, let me just write out 80,000. This was now 0. After eliminating, we assign the maximum number of units possible to the adjacent cell to the northwest corner. Now, what is the maximum number that we can allocate here? The one adjacent to the northwest corner. This one, 30,000, right? So, I will allocate that to C2. 30,000. So that means this one will already be zero. Reduce, it says here, reduce the supply or demand by the assigned amount. Okay, so this one is already zero. And then here, I already, C2 already has 30,000. So I still have 40,000, right? 40,000. Okay? Next step. I'll just write that again. This is 80,000. Zero. This is 30K. I'll just write 30K. Zero. And this is 40,000. Do the same process for the rows which are not yet until eliminated until all the supply and demand are completely satisfied. So again, I will put my 40,000 here. Is that for, oh, this one is already zero. And then look at the, this row, 40,000. So this one is now just 90,000, right? This is 90,000. And then I will allocate that to C3. So everything will now be zero. All right, let me just do it again without the step step so that it will be more continuous. Okay, actually, you don't need to make this zero and zero as long as you can see what you still have left. So those are the steps in the book, but um, I will just proceed as if I'm not following the uh, steps sort of I, I will not turn this to zero because it it has it what it does is that it, you keep on changing the demand and supply so I will just stick that there so that I can always double check my answer so here's what we do still you have here 80,000 I already have 80,000 here so this one is already checked here Next, you go, you always look at your demand and supply. This is 110, so I still have 30,000. I will allocate that to the next cell. But again, now look at your demand. This is 70,000, meaning I can, the maximum is 40,000. Okay, and then go to supply. This is 130,000. This is 40, so I still have 90,000. That's it. So as you can see, all the rows, all the columns, this is 80,000. The sum is 70,000. This is 90,000. For your row, 80 plus 30 is 110. 40 plus 90,000 is 130,000. Okay? So no need to turn this into zeros. So how much will it cost if we use this initial solution? So first, P1, what will be the cost? So it's 80,000 times 30. So that's 2.4 million 
plus 30,000 times 40, so 1.2 million. So at P1, it will cost 3,600,000. For P2, 40,000 units times 30, so 1.2 million plus 4.5 million. Oops. So that's 5 point. So for P2, it will cost, yes, 5,700,000. So the total cost is 9,300,000. So, what we want to know, is this the smallest possible cost that we can get? Okay, so this is just the initial solution. So, we will optimize this using the stepping stone method. Now, the solution that we obtained a while ago is just an initial feasible solution. We still have to check for optimality. What does that mean? Okay, first step is to select an unused cell to be evaluated. This is the table that we had, the initial feasible solution that we had earlier. So I will select P1C3. Next, beginning at this cell, trace a closed path back to the original cells via cells that are currently being used, meaning to say once the ones with entries here, okay? You can only change directions at occupied cells. So you can only do this for occupied cells and you can only do horizontal or vertical moves. So meaning to say here, starting from here, I will do this and then this closed path, okay, until you reach C3, all right? Next, beginning with a plus sign at the unused cell, place alternative minus and plus signs on each corner cells of the closed path. So earlier, it's like this. So this is plus, this is minus, plus, minus. All right. Next, calculate an improvement index by adding together the unit cost figures. What are the unit cost figures? This one. Okay, found in each cell containing a plus sign and then subtracting the unit cost on each cell containing a minus sign. So let's do that here. This was like that, right? And this is plus, minus, plus, minus. So the improvement index is done by just adding all the, adding this, right? Those numbers there, the unit cost. So I have 50 minus 40 plus 30 minus 50. So what is that? It's equal to negative 10, okay? So again, I will write here for P1, C3, the improvement index is negative 10. Repeat steps 1 to 4 until an improvement index has been calculated for all unused cells. If all indices computed are greater than or equal to 0, an optimal solution has been reached. If not, it is possible to improve the current solution and decrease total shipping cost. Okay, let's do this part first. We, this is, we already did an improvement index at P1C3, so I still have here. We have to compute the improvement index at P2C1. So let's do that. So any direction, so here, here, there, right? This is plus, minus, plus, minus, okay? So at P2, C1, that's 50. So that's 50 minus 30 plus 40 minus 30. Am I correct? 50. 
30 minus 30 plus 40 minus 30. Okay, good. So, that's 20 plus 10, 30. So, at P2, C1, the improvement index is 30. Now, let us look at this sentence. If the indices computed are greater than or equal to 0, an optimal solution has been reached. But we still have a negative here, right? So, not yet optimal. So, this is saying that this solution is not yet optimal. So, we have to improve the current solution and decrease the total shipping costs. How will we do that? Okay, but wait. Remember that P1C3 is the cell whose improvement index is negative, correct? Okay, next step. Choose the root with the smallest index. So, we said earlier that the root with the smallest index is P1C3, this one, correct? So, what will we do? We ship the maximum allowable units in this root. What is the maximum allowable units? That can be found on the second part. This quantity is found by referring to the closed path of plus and minus signs. Let us do first the plus or minus signs here, right? This is like that. Plus, minus, plus, minus, correct? And then, this quantity, again, again, select the smallest number found in the squares containing minus signs. So, what are the squares containing minus signs? You have this one, 30,000 and 90,000. So, the smallest number is... 30,000. So, what will you do with this 30,000 here? Oops, this is minus. Okay. What will you do with that 30,000? You add 30,000 to the squares with plus signs. So, I will add here. So, I will add 30,000 here and 30,000 here plus 30,000, okay? But as you can see, you have to subtract that, subtract it from the squares containing minus signs. So this is minus 30,000. That's why you have this, minus 30,000. Okay, of course, why are we doing the adding and subtracting? To make sure that this means that you added 30 here. Where will you get that 30,000 units? From this, right? So, as you can see there, oh, this is still... Wait, let, let me now change the... This will now become 0. Is that minus? Yeah, this is plus. So, this is 70,000. This is 6,000. And this is 30,000. Right? Okay, so we now repeat steps 1 to 6 until you arrive at the point where all improvement indices are positive. So in this case, we have two unused cells, right? So we compute the improvement index first at P1, C2. Now take note here that at P1, C2, this point, how will I remember that you can only go through cells containing numbers? You can change direction. So meaning to say, I cannot do this. Why is this not possible? See, you change direction here, but this one has no number in it. Understand? Remember that for your corner points, you should always have numbers. So... Let me just erase that. So where will I go? I will now trace from here this one. Okay? So, that's plus, minus, 
plus minus. So the improvement index at P1, C2 is 40 minus 50 plus 50 minus 30. So that's 10. So that's positive. That's good. Next, at P2, C1. Let me erase this. At P2, C1 here, where will I go? So, I can do this, this, and this. Go back. Take note that... Th why, why did I choose this? I cannot do like this because this one has no... This is a corner point and there's no number. So that's why I didn't do that. I didn't go up. Okay, so instead of going instead of going up here, right? I cannot switch directions there. So I will pass through the 70,000. I will go here. Okay? So, what are the numbers? What will I compute? So, this is plus. I will pass through this. Understand? Minus. And then plus. And then minus. Is that clear? So, at P2C1, my improvement index is 50 minus 50 plus 50 minus 30 so that's 20 so see all the improvement indices are positive so meaning to say you now have an optimal solution so meaning to say you will uh, supply 80,000 to C1 70,000 to C2 here and 30,000 and 60,000 and 60, will be supplied by P1 and P2 respectively. Alright, so what is now our, this is now our transportation scheme and let us compute the total cost. So from P1 from P1, P1, C1, it will cost, wait, I will just write it here, quantity, that's 80,000, unit cost of 30, so 24 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2,400,000. P1, 2, million, four hundred thousand. P1, two C3, so that's 30,000 units, 50, right? So that's 1,500,000. P2, P2 to C2, that's 7,000. Unit cost is 30, and P2 to C3, 60,000, and then... 50. So this is 2,100,000. This is 3,000,000. So what is the total cost here? So it's 9,000,000. So as you can see, it is lower than the initial feasible solution earlier that we have where in the total cost was 9,300,000. Okay? Okay, let us try this problem. I already have my table here so that it will be easier to analyze the problem. While we're reading it, we will analyze it. Okay, so the company has three projects, A, B, and C. I forgot to mention earlier that you always put your destinations on your column and then your sources for your rows. Otherwise, the methods that we discussed earlier will not work. Okay? Your answer will be wrong. 
project A needs 174 clock loads. So that's the demand. Okay. So project A, the demand is 174. For B, that's 204. And for project C, that's 143. And then it has three warehouses. Warehouse 1 can supply 158. This is 158, 184, and 179. And then these are the costs. So the small numbers from warehouse 1 to projects A, B, and C. So that's 488, right? From warehouse 2. 1624 and 1624 16 from warehouse 3 8 16 and 24 okay so this is our table okay so for step one we have to use northwest corner rule right okay so, plant A needs 174. Can we put 174 here? No, because the supply is 158 only. So, I will only, W1 can only supply 100, whoops, I'm, let me change that. Will only supply 158. Clear? And then... But of course, we have to give 174. So the remaining, we still need 16 units, right? And it will be supplied by W2, 16 units. Understand? Okay, so maybe that's why it's better if I will delete that. So this is already finished also. Okay, and then next. So we're done with our first row and first column. Next, this is 184 minus 16. So I still have 168. So what but W? Two needs how many? W two needs two hundred four. So remember, for the northwest corner rule, what you want to do is to supply first to the first project. Okay. So since warehouse one cannot supply everything, it needs warehouse two, right? Next. So this is already finished. Let's go to project B. So, Project B needs 204, but W2 has only 168. So, I will put 168 there. So, that's already completely used up. But then, we need 204. So, it still needs 204 minus 168. So, that's 36. Okay, so this is already finished. Project B, um, already finished. Okay, next, what about W3? Um, I mean, Project C. So, Project C needs 143. Oops, I forgot this. We already supplied 36, right? So we still have remaining 179 minus 36. There you go. That's correct. This is 143. So this remaining supply will be supplied by W3 to C. All right. So there you go. So as you can see here, 158 plus 16 is 174. 168 plus 36 is 204. This is 143. This sum is 158. 
this sum is 184, and this sum is 179. This is now our initial feasible solution. And then we will now go to the stepping stone method to see whether this one is optimal. Okay, so let us first compute the total cost for our initial feasible solution. I have here a table. So this indicates this is the number of units. 158 cost per unit is 4. Okay, so that's 158 4, 16 times 16. 168 times 24, 36 times 16, there you go, and 143 times 24. The total cost for our initial feasible solution is 8,928. Okay, so let us now get the, so there are a lot here, there are a lot of unused cells. So let's look at W1B. So for this part, okay, so plus, minus, plus, minus. So my improvement index 8 minus 24 plus 16 minus 4. So that's Negative 4. Yeah. Next. Um, what else? What about W1C? Let me just erase this one so that it will be cleaner. Okay, so for W1C, where will I go? We have to go through cells, which has here. I will change here, right? I can only move where there are, correct? So this is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, right? So that's 8 minus 24 plus 16 minus 24 plus 16 minus, minus 4. Am I right? So I have 8 minus 24 plus 16 minus 24 plus 16 minus 4. Oh, that's minus 4. Why is that 1? Okay, minus 4. So what is that? 8 minus 24 is negative 16 plus 16. So that's 0, right? So this becomes 0. Negative 24 plus 16 is negative 8 minus 4, so that's negative 12. Next. I also have W2C. So for W2C, let's see. W2C, where will I go? Ah, this one is easy. Right? So this is plus, minus, plus, minus. As you can see there, 16, oops, I need yellow. 16 minus 24 plus 16 minus 24, that's negative 16, right? And lastly, we need W3A. Let me just erase this. Okay, so for W3A, 
Okay, so plus, minus, plus, minus. So W three A I have eight minus sixteen plus twenty four minus sixteen. So this is negative eight plus eight. So that's zero. So what is the smallest improvement index? So that can be found at W two C here okay so we will now um what's this we will we have the smallest improvement index occurs at w2c so let's look at again the path of plus and minus signs okay so what do we do again we look at the squares with negatives and then we look at the smallest number and in this case that's 143 so meaning to say we will add 143 here to everything with plus so 36 plus 143 is so this becomes 179 and this one will be zero this one will be 168 minus 143 is 25. So this will be our new solution. What is the total cost for this solution? I have here again your table. So as you can see here, the total cost is less than our initial cost, right? Our initial cost the first cost that we obtained was 8920 so it improved the cost was lessened it's all now it's already 6640 so we will try to see again if we can still make it smaller okay again we will get the improvement in this so we have a lot here we have four so w1 b so for w1 b so this is okay plus minus plus minus so that's 8 minus 4 plus 16 minus 24 so that's 4 minus 8 negative 4 Next, how about at W1C? So for W1C, where will I go? Here, here, there, right? So that's plus, minus here plus minus okay so w1 c that's 8 minus 16 plus 16 minus 4 so that's 4 okay next we have w3 a for w3 a Okay, so plus, minus, plus, minus, W3A, that's, what is that? 8 minus 16 plus 24 minus 16. Negative 8 plus 8, that's 0. And lastly, Lastly, at W3C, W3C, so this is plus, minus, plus, minus, W3C is 24 minus 16 plus 24 minus 16, so that's 
8 plus 8, 16. So as you can see, the improvement in this is, it's not, although we still have a negative number here, but it's already starting to become bigger, right? So the smallest number that we have here is W1B. Okay, so we still have to make an improvement. Where is that? At W1B here. So let's look at the closed path again. Let me just erase the others. So the closed path that we had here was this, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus. The squares containing minus signs are 158 and 25. The smallest number is 25. So I will add those to the ones with pluses. So 25, 16 plus 25 is 41. And then I will subtract that two squares with minus. So 158 minus 25 is 133. This is now another, uh, this is an improved solution. And we will check again for optimality. Here is the total cost if we use this scheme. The total cost here is 6,540. Again, it is an improvement because the total cost that we had earlier was 6,640. So it became, uh, we deducted 100, we saved 100 from the total cost. Let's see again if we can still improve this further. Let us see if we can still improve this by calculating our improvement index. So we have W1C. So for W1C, where will I go? Um, here, remember your cor the, the corners, your corner points should always have a number in it. there correct so i have plus minus plus minus so my improvement index is 8 minus 4 plus 16 minus 16 so that's equal to 4 okay next let me erase again for what's our next one? W2B. For W2B here, where will I go? Um, make sure. Ah, okay, here. Right. This is plus, minus, plus, minus. My improvement index is 24 minus 8 plus 4 minus 16. 24 minus 8 is 16 plus 4, 20 minus 16. That's also equal to 4. What's next? W3A. For W3A, what is our improvement index where will i go so here 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 okay so what's that plus minus plus minus my improvement index is eight minus four plus eight minus 16 so that's 4 minus 8 negative 4 i have a negative again so meaning to say this is not yet optimal and lastly we have w3c for w3c hmm, this is a bit tricky right if i'm here if i go up I cannot do this because I cannot take, I cannot change direction here. It has no number in it. 
So if I go up, I cannot go up also. I cannot change direction there. So if I go up here, right? Change direction. There's a number. Change direction. Change direction there. Okay? Let's trace that. As long as you can go back. So what did we do? Go here. 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 There. There. Okay? Let's put the signs. Plus. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. This is our initial. Let, let me trace that again. From 24, I went to 16. 16 there. Until I go back. Okay? So, my improvement index is 24 minus 16. Oops. I should write that. Minus 16. And then, what happened? Plus 16 minus plus and then minus and then right correct you will end up with plus okay so my improvement index is 24 minus 16 plus 16 minus 4 plus 8 minus 16 so this gets cancelled out 24 minus 4 20 minus 8 so that's 12. So, we can still improve again at W3A. So, at W3A, where is that? Wait. Let me again erase. So, because we will change the... Okay. At W3A, let us trace the... What did we do there? We traced this path, correct? So, plus, minus, plus, minus. So, the numbers on with the negatives are 4 and this one, 16. So, the numbers there are 133 3 and 179. We choose the smaller which is 133 so we subtract 133 on the negative squares and we add it on the positive squares so minus 133 here you add 133 here minus 133 so that's 46 and here you add 133. So that's 158. Alright, and then let us check the total cost. Okay, so the total cost for this table is 6,008. So again, it is still an improvement from 6,540 to 6,008. Let us see if this one is already optimal. So let's try W1A. At W1A, where will I go? Let's trace first. I cannot do this because there is no number when I change when I change directions here. So for W1A, what I can do is do this, this one. Okay? Let's trace that. This, 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 this. Plus, minus, plus, minus. There you go. So, W1A, that's 4 minus 8 plus 16 minus 8. That's negative 4 plus 8 or 4. Okay. We're done. That's positive. Now, 4... W1C, I am here. Where will I go? If I do this, I cannot do, there's no number here. What if I go here, there, 
no because I would have to do that okay where will we go if I do this this again I can't what can we do mm. again here what's that again From here, W1C. Ah. I think I can do this. You can, remember, you can only step on the squares with numbers. Do this, 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 this. There you go. Okay. So let's trace that. Again, I will now. What did I say? What did I do? <laughs> I already forgot. Um, from here, what is that again? Um, what did I do? Go down here, here, there. There you go. Okay, so what was my path? This, right? I'll put arrows. Put arrows. Okay. So that's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. So what is that again? So that's 8. What was that? 8 minus 16 plus 16 minus 8 plus 16 minus 8. So again, it's, I just want to show, that was 8 minus 16 plus 16 minus 8 plus 16 minus 8, right? What is that improvement index? This one is 0, 16 minus 8, so that's 8. Ooh, that's also positive. Okay, next. Let's look at... So we're done with W1A. Oops, this is, w, this is W1C. That's W1C. Okay, next. Let's look at W2B. For W2B, that's easy because it's just this path, correct? Plus, minus, plus, minus. So W2B, improvement index of 24 minus 16 plus 8 minus 16. 24 minus 16, 8 minus 8. 8, that's 0. Still? Greater than or equal to zero. Lastly, is that the last? Yeah, W3C. I think this is it. W3C. Where is W3C? Here. Okay, so where will I go? Ah, I can go this, 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 and this, right? Let's trace. So, what's that? There, 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 there. So, plus, minus, plus, minus. So, I forgot to mention, why was this called a stepping stone method? Because you can only step on the squares with numbers, right? So, if you do not have numbers, you have to jump on that. You cannot stop there, okay? So, W3C, where is that again? So, where, 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 where did I start? So, 24 minus 8 plus 16 minus 16. That's, this is 0. There you go, 16. Good. So, everything is already greater than or equal to 0. So, that means we have already arrived at an optimal solution okay so based on our 
solution. This is now our transportation scheme and it will cost us 6,008. Okay?